tires. Today we're going to be tying a stone fly and for all intensive purposes we're going to do a yellow one because it's early season and there seems to be quite a few yellows in the uh, Farmington River which is my home waters. So of course you start by lashing on your thread and what I like to do is I like to cover the whole body because we're going to be putting on a body weighted body on top of the shank of the hook and what it does is it creates a nice flat profile which of course we all know that stoneflies are very flat they're not round this is one of the little bodies I'm talking about they come in three different sizes if you can find them if you can't you can just use uh, two pieces of lead lashed on either side of the um, the hook itself so you want to put this on like such and wrap it on real good uh, I might mention on this fly it is actually a three-step fly and the reason being is because of drying time so we want to put this body on lash it on as good as you can like such and then apply the tails and today I'm using gray goose biots and we want to put one on each side of course for the tails the tails on a stonefly are pretty short so you just lengthen it out like this get your tail on nice you trim this one off like such place the other one on it's easier if you put the tail on the far side of the fly the second one is easier to match up because you can line it right up with the other side okay now like I said this is a three-step fly so what I do is I whip finish this and secure it trim off and take hard as hull because it dries fast and it dries nice and hard and I coat the whole body the leaded body weighted body of this make sure it penetrates you you'll see your tying marks and then this will fill right in it's like a little cup in there and you fill it in nice like this and that what that does is it secures that actual flat body shape right to the hook so it doesn't spin and I take it off and I let it dry here's a dried first stage and we re, re put it on with black thread start in the back like such you trim these are soaked pheasant tail quills I have to keep them in a bottle all right with water and we do this so they don't crack when you're lashing them on it keeps them nice and moist and pliable and you want to start at the thin end and you lash it on real good like such trim this and you just advance your thread forward to your tie off spot which is about three quarters of the way down the shank of the hook and you just wrap this now you'll see that it almost looks like a woven fly it's a brown white brown white brown white all the way down and once we we tie this on this is the second part of the fly and what we're doing this here is we trim this off secure real good like such and whip finish this And then we also coat this with hard as hull. And this is like a double protector. It stops it from chipping and fraying and wrapping around the shank of the hook. Okay. So that's your second set stage of this fly, tying it. You remove that, of course, and let it dry. And at this point, we change colors of thread we go to yellow because we're tying a yellow stonefly and we wrap this on secure it nice and tight wrap up over that pheasant quill okay now the next thing we do is we we want to secure 
a wing pad and I use on the yellow one a light colored model turkey and we just cut out a segment segment and we place this upside down the bad side facing up on the body of the fly and we lash that on secure it like such and one little trick that's going to help you is that when we put on the legs we want the legs to extend out sideways not lay flat down the side of the uh, bug itself so how we do that is we will put a little bit of yellow dubbing very thin sections of it because the uh, bug is actually flat like I mentioned before and we make a tie-in spot right here and that elevates that off the body and we take goose biots and we lay one on this side and you'll notice that once you lay it on there it's going to stick up because it actually is on the side of that little bit of dubbing that we put so it makes an angle straight out and we trim that one off and we match the other one again always do the one that's furthest away from you the opposite side because it's easier to match them up lengthwise when you do that and then you wrap that down like this trim off and now you're going to add on a little bit more dubbing down towards the eye and this is going to separate the legs and we know that there's six on this actual insect we're only going to put four because that's all that's necessary to catch fish this fly takes long enough as it is without adding on unnecessary legs And here, you grab some more biots, place them on like such. Make sure they're a little bit shorter than the first going back. And then we, we put on the second one, match it up lengthwise. Tie it on like such, put on a little bit more dubbing, almost to the eye. It's easier to turn it upside down and see where you missed your coloring. And pull over your wing pad. Pinch it a little bit so it rounds off down by the eye. Lash that on real good. Now, here, you could actually split these and leave two of the fibers hanging out for antennae, but it really doesn't matter on this particular insect. So I just whip finish it and cover it, coat it again with uh, hard as hull. And you have a finished bug. And once this is done, I'll show you how it looks. And you can see how the legs stick out nice, how the profile is nice and flat. The yellow, the bright yellow on the um, body and on the thorax, segmented body, tails, and you got that's a very, very effective pattern. It sinks like a, a rock and it fishes well. And that's it for your stonefly nymph.